So in continuation with our previous video, we are going to discuss what is to be done during the waiting period when we consider a cross facial nerve graft. Now this procedure described by Terzis is known as the babysitting procedure. Now this was quite confusing for me also when I was studying it. So I'm going to try and elaborate it so it becomes a little simple to understand. So what we have to first remember is that we have a paralyzed side and we have a normal side. So how I look at it is that someone needs to take care of the baby, which is the muscle on the paralyzed side, while waiting for the parents to reach, which is the nerve input coming from the non-paralyzed side. So again, what does that mean? So in cases of the cross facial nerve graft, that is the CFNT, in those cases, we do this babysitting procedure because this cross facial nerve graft, which comes in from the contralateral side, that is from the paralyzed, non-paralyzed side to the paralyzed side is going to take a period of four to eight months to reach. So we all know about denervation of the muscles and atrophy of the muscles. So that can happen while you are waiting. And if that happens, then there is no point of our procedure. So what is the principle behind this babysitting? So first we go to the normal side, which is the non-paralyzed side with the good functioning facial nerve. And then we see the shortest distance of how we can use these reversed sural nerve grafts to transfer the innervation onto the paralyzed side. So the route that is taken is through the upper lip, that is the upper buccal sulcus, because the nerves that we are looking for are for smile reanimation and they are closely found in the region of the nasolabial fold and therefore taking this route would be the shortest distance which helps our innovation to progress faster. So the stages in which babysitting is done are two. So in the first stage we have the baby which is the facial muscles and we have the banking and in the second stage we are going to connect the parents. So what does that mean? So in the first stage, we are going to take the sural nerve graft and we are going to connect it to certain accessory branches of the facial nerve which are doing the smile reanimation and those muscles are found out by the nerve stimulation and then few of those branches obviously without affecting the normal side are chosen and then the reverse sural nerve grafts are taken and tunneled in and they are left in the upper buccal sulcus. Now in the procedure described initially, this cross facial nerve graft via the sura nerve graft is not co-apted on the paralyzed side. Therefore in the first stage, who is the babysitter? So the babysitter here is the nerve to the masseter, which is most commonly used, which comes from the trigeminal nerve. Now from the nerve to masseter, certain branches are taken and then they are used over here to innervate the facial muscles. So the certain branches that are left over here are found out and then the trigeminal branches of masseter are connected to those branches of the facial nerve. Now remember here we don't have a proximal input that is why we have a facial palsy but the distal branches are, that are innervating the muscle are still available. So what we are doing is that we are connecting those distal branches and we are taking the proximal motor input from the nerve to the masseter. Now this neural connection is established and then the masseter nerve starts to provide the motor input which helps to stimulate the muscles and prevent them from atrophy. So for example, the stimulation that is provided by faradic and galvanic stimulation in cases of brachial plexus palsy when we are waiting for the re-innovation to occur. This is in a certain way providing the similar sort of input where the nerve itself is helping to stimulate the muscles. Now after a period of four to eight months, once this cross facial nerve graft has reached, that means the neural input has reached till here, then what happens is that this cross facial nerve graft is helped to co-apt to the facial nerve branches on the paralyzed side. So over here, distal to where the nerve to the masseter was already co-apted. So then this nerve is going to provide your actual input, which is going to help in the smile reanimation. 
So if we already had this re-innovation, why did we go in for a cross facial nerve graft? Because as discussed in the previous video, we want smile symmetry and spontaneity and proper animation to occur for which the cross facial nerve graft is ideal. And in the same time, we don't want the muscles to die out. Therefore, we are keeping them alive. We are babysitting those muscles with the input from the nerve to the masseter. So two common questions you're going to be asked is that why do you only bank in the first stage? Can't you directly connect the nerves? In certain studi studies, it has been shown that yes, you can do it as a single stage, but the initial procedure that was described said that it is better to wait for the cross facial nerve graft to grow and after that in the second stage, the coaptation is done. Another question is that, but do you keep this babysitter? So after the parent has reached the child, should the babysitter stay or can the babysitter go? So usually certain cases they say that you should leave it because what this babysitter is doing is providing constant stimulus and is helping create a powerful smile as well. But if the babysitter and the parents don't agree, that means after the cross facial nerve graft has also grown, if there is an awkward pull in the smile and it is not symmetrical, then this coaptation can be broken at a later stage if required. But the general consensus now is to leave this innovation and distal to where the coaptation was done with the nerve to masseter, this coaptation of the cross facial nerve graft is maintained.